Welcome inside the Gallagher Event Center for Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference Showdown between visiting Metro State University Denver and the UCCS Mountain Lions. Alongside Jake Ross, I'm Jason Carter. And Jake, the Mountain Lions have been playing some really great basketball the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and this one's set to be a great matchup. These two teams uh, kind of middle of the road so far in the grand scheme of things. Both teams coming in winning three of their last five games. The, the Roadrunners with a little bit of a leg up in the momentum category have won their last two, but two teams starting to hit their stride middle of the season. They're set to have a great Very similar for the Mountain Lions in particular as we saw the second half of last year. They just absolutely caught fire, and it seems like that's kind of what they're doing again this year. Yeah, and if, it, if it's not broken, don't fix it type thing. If that's what works for them and it takes them a little while to get going in their season, there's there's no reason to to try and tweak things. Obviously, you like to start early every year and, and kind of get that ball moving. But if it takes you a couple games, but then you find your stride, nothing wrong with that either. So let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for the visiting Roadrunners, they are going to go with Michaela Espinosa, Kendra Potter, Jaden Galloway, Misa Giberto, and Taj Bonds. Meanwhile, the Mount Lions will go with a starting lineup. They've used the last handful of games, and it's worked out well for them. Gracie Hanneborg, Inez Latapia, Bree Robinson, Sydney Nillis, and in the middle, the reigning Mount Armac Offensive Player of the Week, Mason White, who put together an incredible three games last week. Yeah, and Mason has always kind of been the big presence, especially in the middle of the floor for this team. Uh, she uses her size to her her advantage they get the ball down deep to her and she just kind of goes to work she did a great job of that obviously they did lose that one game to Adam State but she was still kind of cooking in that game so that's going to be a target for MSU knowing that she's a big part of that team and kind of look to take her away from the mountain lines underneath as much as possible. On the other side, it's Potter, number three, who leads them in scoring at almost 18 points a game, which is actually good for number two in the entire conference. So the mountain lions are going to have to come up with a way to maybe let her get hers, but slow everyone else down if you have to. Exactly, and she plays an average of 30 minutes a game. There's only 40 minutes in the entire thing, so... A big part of that for them, and they'll try and get her going as quickly as possible, just like the Mountain Lions with White. So the shot clock did not start, so that's why the whistle blew. Uh, six seconds came off the game clock, but they only took three off the shot clock. So Mountain Lions still with possession, and the shot clock is working this time around. So first off, I'm to possession, and Anna Borg will run the offense. Nillis, Robinson, right back down to White, Mason, Turn around in the lane, can't get it to fall. And just like that, that's what the Mountain Lions are going to have to do to kind of get their offense rolling early. We talked about Mason White coming off that great couple of games, and same thing early. Mason does not miss a whole lot of shots. She is 29th in the entire country in field goal percentage, so she will certainly get hers as this game progresses as Robinson tipped that ball out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Roadrunners. Here's Para. Good defense there on the outside by Nillis. Espinosa now looking for some help. Gets it off to Bonds. Three on the shot clock. Bonds, the drive. Shot glass is good as she lowered a shoulder a little bit into Hanneborg. That was good defense by UCCS. They were in the right positions, and it was just a kind of showing a boot force by Bonds to, to get through that, that pressure. But Mountain Lions are doing good things early, and they just hard-working basket for the Roadrunners on that. So UCCS, their second possession of the game. Robinson gets to the free throw line, is picked up defensively. They work it over to Latapia and then swing it quickly over to Hanneborg for three. Gracie, nothing but net. Great ball movement there from UCCS. They, they kind of work it to the near side first, pull MSU to that side of the court, work it back quickly, and a great shot from Hanneborg. And the Mountain Lions come away with a steal on the other end. Robinson quickly up to Gracie again. Hanneborg into the lane. Just kind of flicked it over her head as she was fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Not a bad strategy. I mean, if, if you're going to draw that contact, might as well try and put the ball up. She's going to get two shots out of it. 
So Hannah Borg, the offensive spark here early on for the Mountain Lions. First one is good. Gracie, a 67% free throw shooter. And she goes two a two and has all five mountain line points. Quickly up, Pato straight to the rim and she finishes her first two. Metro State likes to play with that pace, kind of stretch you out defensively and kind of keep you on your toes, never really know who it's going to be, but they do like to do it quickly. So for the Mount Lions, kind of have to be ready for those quick plays in transition like that. Anna Borg again in the far corner. She kicks it back out, though, to Latapio, gets it back to Gracie, who somehow got it off to White as she tiptoed along the baseline, but Mason misses another jumper. Again, the ball movement, creating things for UCCS, and, and passing is a very important creating those opportunities on offense. MSU Denver works it down low, and then they kick it back out to the three-point arc. Espinosa lost the handle. Good defense from the Mountain Lions, and it's ripped away by Nillis. Quickly up to Gracie, who's beating everybody down the floor. No foul call there as Potter came from behind and ripped it out of Hannah Borg's hands, but it'll stay with UCCS. Uh, MSU is looking for maybe a little bit of an appeal here. They thought that the Mountain Lions were the last to touch it, but... UCCS this time is the quick team in transition and they're creating chances. Quickly off the inbounds, Robinson shots no good. Rebound to Espinosa. Bonds will look to push it. Gets it over the timeline as Galloway over to Potter. Three ball this time is good. So Pata with five quick points here, just a little over three minutes into quarter number one, gives the Roadrunners another lead as Robinson back out to Hanneborg, gets it over to Inez. Her three no good, but there's Mason with the rebound. Mount Lions all over the offensive glass so far, creating second chances. Mason the kick out to Nillis is no good, but Hanneborg, great rebound, quick pass. Can't finish, right into the hands of Robinson, who will finish to tie it up. It only took him three tries, but as long as you get those, those second, third chance opportunities off the offensive glass, that's going to be long-term success. So defensively for MSU, they're going to have to be on the ball, box out your man, and, and get those rebounds. Outlines already with four offensive rebounds in the game. White sets a screen for Sydney. Sydney looking for a roller, gets it over to Hannah Bork, skip pass to Latapia, gets around her defender. Oh, fed it to Mason through her hands, but right back to Nillis, who then has a great feed to Mason, who will go to the free throw line. So Mason will head to the free throw line as the teams make a whole bunch of substitutions. Three Roadrunners check in, as well as two Mount Lions. It's Jessica Nation and Riley Ottman for UCCS, while Auschkis Dostisch and Yao, as well as Jones, all check in for MSU Denver. Galloway and Parra are still the two roadrunners from the original starting lineup as Mason missed the first one. The second one also off the mark. Full court press from UCCS, but then they kind of back off as the roadrunners methodically take it over midcourt. Long two, no good. Long rebound picked up by White. She quickly gets it up to Jessica Nation. Weaving through the defense, but she'll kick it back out. Anna Borg. Nation 
Mason into the lane off the front rim. Good take all the way for the finish from Galloway. And the Roadrunners back in front by a bucket. Hanneborg straight away three ball, no good. Quick handoff, shot up, and talk about a shooter's touch as Potter drops in two more, and she's now got seven of the 11 points for the Roadrunners. Mountain Lions trying to respond quickly. Ottman, crossover into the lane, and Riley Ottman won't get it to fall, but she will have a couple of free throws. That play, however, brings us to the media timeout. Metro State University Denver with a four point lead here early on. We're gonna take a quick break when we come back. More Mountain Lion basketball. Welcome back inside the Gallagher Event Center. Riley Ottman, the freshman, will have a couple of free throws here. First one out of the hands, no good. And the Mountain Lions having some issues with their free throws. Ottman, however, swishes the second one in the tier three of six as a team. Full court press again, broken by MSU Denver. And they're gonna get a turnover call on the Roadrunners as trying to make a move was Yao. Good post up by White, the bench calling and Mason lost her dribble. The bench was yelling for them to get the ball down to Mason. They did, and unfortunately, it's too hard of a dribble, but she comes away with the rebound on the other end. And now, a quick push by Sydney Nillis, who will now head to the free throw line as the fouls slowly starting to rack up for the Roadrunners. That's their fourth team foul here in quarter number one. Giberto and Bonds both back in for Metro State. As Nillis hits the first one. Sydney's second one barely hit the net too. It hardly moved as she hits both free throws and brings UCCS to within one. Oh, Ottman almost got her hand on that one, but the Roadrunner is able to break the press once again. Another three ball, this one off the left rim, and who else? Mason White comes down with another rebound. For Mason, that's her fourth board already as they quickly get it up to Sydney in the corner. Nillis, hard off the back rim, but right into the hands of Hannah Borg, who lays it up and in. 
Gracie Hannibor gives UCCS a one point lead as they continue to put on a full court press. Little miscommunication, Gracie picks up the ball handler though, great feed down low. Good ball movement from the Roadrunners, leads to an easy layup for Para, and she's at nine. Anna Borg lost it out of bounds, but it went off of her defender Galloway, so it'll stay with the home team as Espinosa checks back in for MSU Denver. Jessica Nation at the top of the key, over to Sydney. Oh, the in. Feed into the post and getting around White was Giberto and they're gonna call her for a foul. That's the fifth team foul, so Mason White should head back to the free throw line. And she does, she missed her first two the first time around. But makes this one. Second free throw is also good, and Mason White hits both this time around. Emily Hovas checking in for UCCS, replacing Sydney Nillis. Hovas, a freshman at a Highlands Ranch, gotten a lot more playing time the last couple of weeks, and she will not come away with the board, but she was there in the defensive scuffle, and so Ottman will bring it out. Nation, drive, kick to White, back up to Gracie, down low. Nice feed from Hanneborg inside to Nation, and Jessica has her first two points. Wide open three ball from Bonds, no good. Weak side rebound, however, for the visitors and the easy put back there from Giberto. Bonds read that pass nicely and it's gonna go off of her and out of bounds, so it'll stay with UCCS as Bonds is replaced by Auschkistoschdisch. So one point lead for UCCS, under a minute and a half to go here in quarter number one. Nation, baseline, tried to get it to White who was double teamed and it's turned over. Good defense from the Mountain Lions, forces a turnover. And Ottman will slow it down and wait for the rest of her teammates. Back over to Riley on the wing. Working on Para, Ottman shot off the mark. Good move, just couldn't finish. Galloway tried to feed it down low, went off the hands and coming away with the steal is Hanneborg. Gracie trying to beat everybody down the lane. Lost it, loose ball, picked up by the Roadrunners. So a little bit of a sloppy not final 90 seconds as Para, nice step through and finish, and she's in double figures with 11. Yeah, and Para can really, it looks like she can do whatever she wants and it's gonna go in. She's just kind of been throwing it up. A really nice Euro step on that play there, not to take anything away, but she's just got that touch. Ottman, three on the game clock, and she lost it out of bounds. 1.7 to go, Mountain Lions, their subs have been sitting at the scores table for a bit, so they will come in with 1.7 to go. Alexa Dominguez and Bree Robinson as the Roadrunners have to go 94 feet in under two seconds, and it's not gonna do it, so they'll hold on to it, but they will head into the second quarter with a one-point advantage, 17-16. Mountain Lions are gonna have to come up with it way to stop Potter as she's got 11. 
of those 17. We're going to take a quick break when we come back. Second quarter action. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back inside the Galaglia Event Center and Jake, the Mountain Lions, a couple of things to like there in the first quarter, but a lot of missed opportunities, truly. Yeah, like I said, and it's kind of been the story of their early season. They're getting those good shots. A lot of them are just not falling in. I mean, you saw them get them down to Mason White. He lost her dribble once. A couple times she got a good shot up, bounced on out. They were good on the offensive glass. If they keep that up, it will start to pay off them once things start to average out. But Got to stay after it. Oh, great take and a finish there with the contact. Galloway split two mountain lions and was able to drop it in. Galloway, her and Para both have played every second of this game for MSU Denver so far, and, and you can see why it really runs through them, and, and Galloway showing it off there. Galloway finishes off the three-point play. She rarely leaves the court. She is actually leads the entire conference in minutes played at over 35 a game. So if she's not in foul trouble, she will probably not leave the court. Ovas the skip pass. Nation got it into the lane. Might have taken an extra step, but got away with it. A couple of mountain lions battle each other, however, and the Roadrunners come away with it. Espinosa got the defender up, but Mason White, good recovery for the block. The Mountain Lions keeping their hands up, trying to be active in the defensive area. Bree Robinson takes it one dribble in, missed the shot, but White there for the rebound. Kicks it quickly out to Dominguez. Her shot no good either. And Jessica Nation had position. And I think they're going to get a foul on number 21, I believe was number Duberto for MSU Denver. Agar Ferris checked in for the first time for UCCS. Long three ball off the right rim. Hovas not afraid to take that shot. She's shown it time and time again here as she kind of comes in in the middle of the quarter like this, but she, once she gets that open look, she's not afraid to pull the trigger. Three ball, nothing but Ned out of the corner from Brooklyn Jones. White still looking for her first bucket. Ferris had the rebound, but they're going to get a push down low on MSU Denver. It's going to go against Para, and for her, that is just her first. A little bit of uh, physical play here from MSU so far. A little bit starting to get into the foul trouble. Not so far yet. They did get into that penalty area in the first quarter, but you got to be careful and kind of limit that physical play. Mason White and Gracie Hanneborg, a little bit of miscommunication. White thought she was going to the corner, and Hanneborg went back to the middle of the court. So that pass goes straight out of bounds, and another turnover for UCCS, their fifth of the game.
Oh, and they're going to get an offensive foul there on Auschkistostisch as she set a screen. They're going to say she moved before the screen was completed. The Mountain Lions, once again, getting those opportunities, but they're just not capitalizing so far, yet to have a point in this second quarter. And they just kind of have to capitalize when these opportunities are given to them if they're going to keep up. Dominguez lost the dribble, looking for some help. Gets it out to Robinson, and they get it back up top to Hanneborg. He hands it off to Ferris, who split the deed. Should have kept going to the basket, kicked it out. The shot is missed, but Alexa with the long rebound. Ferris pulls up over her defender, left it short, but Gracie another long offensive rebound. And they're going to call Hanneborg for an offensive foul as she was making the move along the baseline. And Parr is going to take a seed for the first time in this game. Both no. her and Galloway currently on the bench for the first time. Outline, see if they can take advantage with out the two top scores for the Roadrunners on the floor. Bond shot no good. White comes down with yet another rebound. Six boards already for Mason, who averaged a double-double last week. Dominguez's pass into Ferris, who's then double-teamed, gets it right back to Alexa, who gets all the way to the rim, and there we go. The Mountain Lions score. It had been over five minutes since they put any points on the board before Dominguez puts in that one. Mountain Lions still moving the ball very well. They just need to get those shots to start to fall, and, and they will, but... As long as they stay after it, keep trying to press and stretch that defense out. They'll start to make their way back. Good help side there from Hanneborg, who then comes away with the rebound. Gracie to Alexa, who goes baseline again, feeds it to Mason, and coming from behind with the steal was Bonds. That was good help jumping in from the back from Bonds. Kind of saw UCCS. Pulled in that ball behind them, not really paying attention to the ball securities. Took her opportunity to come in with the steal. Three ball, good. Mason White left just enough daylight there, and Auschkistosh just knocks in the three. Hanneborg from the angle, no good. And the ball goes out of bounds, and it'll stay with the Mountain Lions. So Para and Galloway both back in for MSU Denver, while Jessica Nation, you see her there, checks back in as well. Mountain Lions will get a partial reset. That adds about three more seconds onto the shot clock. And the quick shot, however, off the mark, and Para comes down with it. Galloway, no one picks her up. There we go. Dominguez did a good job to get back, but then... Easy take for Espinosa. Mountain Lions just kind of losing some of those road runners in their defensive switching. We've seen it lead to a couple kick out three so far. That time, another layup for the road runners. Great feed down low, and Agar Ferris with two. Oh. Uh. Quick pass around to the corner, goes right through the hands of the Roadrunners player, and that'll bring us to the media timeout. MSU Denver is on a 13-4 run as they have an eight-point lead.
So out of the timeout, the Mountain Lions find themselves down by eight as they've been outscored 11 to four here in the second quarter. Good ball movement. Dominguez kick out. There's a long J from Hanneborg off the front rim and they're gonna get Jessica Nation for the foul as she was battling Para down low. Yeah, just a little bit of a reach around foul there on Nation. And it's, the Roadrunner was there and she, she kind of reached around to try and get it from the back and they're gonna call that one every time. Full court press coming from the Mountain Lions, try and create some turnovers if at all possible. Galloway and Espinosa, though, easily break it. There's the double team, though, over mid court. Loose ball picked up by the Roadrunners and they get it out of harm's way. Three ball. No good. And again, the Mountain Lions losing a Roadrunner kind of in the mix there as an open look. But they're, they're good. The pressure is good in transition, but they need to be able to get back into their set defense cleanly and not give up those wide open shots. Nation, good take, but again, a close shot does not fall. And I think they're going to say Jessica was the last one to touch it. And the official looking for a towel to wipe off the basketball. All right, back to action. MSU Denver still holding on to their eight point lead. Mount Lions still trying to create some pressure, but Roadrunners have done a really great job with the press break. Oh, Robinson tried to jump that one just a tad late, and they made him pay as Para now has 14. If that's how they hurt you. You see Robinson take that chance. You kind of have to be sure if you're going to take that jump because then you put your defense shorthanded as you run up for the steal, and it gives up the wide open three. Ferris finishes down low. And MSU Denver, really not a great three-point shooting team, but they've been able to knock down some wide open looks here as their lead currently sits at nine. We're gonna have a three second violation called on the Roadrunners. Mason White is still on the bench for UCCS. Usually don't see her spend this much time over there. Not in any foul trouble or anything, so we'll see how much longer she sits around as there's 2.40 to go here in quarter number two. Talked about the scoring difference in this quarter. Mountain Lions with six points. The Roadrunners with 14 and a chance to add here, but still the Mountain Lions now it's a 11 point deficit, but still not insurmountable. If they start to get those looks to fall in, they're certainly able to claw their way back in this game. But from the other side of things, if you're the road runners, you wanna use this momentum and kind of put this away as fast as you can and kind of keep that arm's length between you and the Mountain Lions. The 11 point lead is the largest of the game for MSU Denver as they come away with another turnover as well, right in front of their bench. Yeah, lots of giveaways in this game. Eight for MSU Denver, and that one should be the eighth for UCCS as well. So lots of giveaways on both sides. The difference, though, is that MSU is taking those opportunities and capitalizing on the offensive end. Spinoza, work it over to Para. Para double teamed. Bonds now. Galloway, crossover, into the lane. Oh. I mean, when things are falling, they just fall. Yeah, and, and Mountain Lions, that was good defense. This, there was 
the the slide from the the D underneath and and still Galloway was still able to get that one up and the when you have the scoring touch you have the scoring touch and it falls in. The Roadrunners shooting almost 58 percent from the field here in the first half as they currently outscoring the Mountain Lions by 12 here in the second quarter. UCCS has gone scoreless for over two minutes. They had a five-minute stretch earlier, so not too difficult to see why they currently trail by now make it 12 as that free throw fall. The Mountain Lions are kind of pushing that that physical play for the Roadrunners, pushing that foul total up, almost back up into the penalty. The only problem is the Mountain Lions have struggled from the free, free throw line, so if you're going to play that way, you've got to hit those free throws, and that will allow the Mountain Lions to get back to this game, but they season long have only been shooting about 59% from the free throw. Good hands there from Latapia. She recovered on defense quickly up to Dominguez who can't finish the layup. And that's the thing. The Mountain Lions are getting those turnovers, but you have to be able to translate that into points in transition. Again, they get the steal up to Dominguez and she can't finish the basket. Point off turnovers, seems like Denver has more. They've only been credited with seven, but it seems like every time UCCS gives them the ball, they're able to put some points on the board. Under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Kara, spin move, hits the deck. They're gonna say she tripped over her own feet. Outlines trying to get it up quickly to Tapia, though, not able to run it down. And Mason White checks back in for the final 37 and a half seconds. Mountain Lions just need something to kind of spark this team. Not a whole lot of energy in this, this room right now, and, and you can that's translating for UCCS on the court. They need to get something going, something they can get excited about and get the ball rolling. Galloway will slow it down. About six seconds difference between the game clock and the shot clock. And the Roadrunners are going to eat up as much of it as humanly possible. Galloway with seven on the shot clock. Goes left, kicks it back out. Three ball from straight away. No good. Rebound, however, to Espinosa, who now will head to the free throw line. Uh, that's only the fourth team foul. Sorry. I don't think she was shooting. She looked like she was trying to pass. I think gonna yeah, bring the it official underneath. called the ball out of bounds. So 6.6 .6 to go for the Roadrunners. They quickly get it into Parra, whose shot is blocked. And then a late foul called against Sydney Nillis. Looked like Sydney got an awful lot of basketball on that, but they're going to call a foul on her and send Parra to the free throw line. Certainly a late whistle, and Nillis was already down on the court when the whistle went. So, well, especially from a coaching perspective, you you rather have it on the way up so that you know that rather than wait to see how it plays out and then get the whistle. But either way, Para knocks down both free throws, and she's already over her season average. As the three ball at the end of the corner does not fall, and that's going to do it for the first 20 minutes. MSU Denver uses a couple of long scoreless drops for the Mountain Lions and they're able to put together a 13 point lead at halftime. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll get you ready for the final 20 minutes of this game. Don't go too far. My name is Al Wilson. I'm the main stage event coordinator for the Office of Student Activities, which is the department that brought you Roar Days. OSA handles everything from X to Z when it comes to the planning of Roar Days. We do the budgeting, the event coordinating, the execution, as well as partnering with other departments to really bring a successful week of events to campus. The whole point of Roar Days is to bring a week of events that kind of brings students together on campus when they're not in class. The weather's starting to warm up, and we really want to try to reach as many students as possible. We do different events that hit different demographics, the driving kind of focus towards commuters, or the black light might be towards residential students and we just try to reach all the students and bring them together. 
It's been incredible to go to school here the past few years and really get to be part of that community and see whether it's athletic events or a homecoming dance. Students always come out and they're always excited to be there. It's a really great experience. The majestic mountain lion, one of nature's most powerful predators, primarily indigenous to the Americas, this big cat is known to make its home just about anywhere. Although most consider them to be solitary in nature, these big cats actually show advanced social intelligence. This cat is known to be territorial and as such will fiercely defend its territory from other big cats, employing a blend of power and stealth except during courtship. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. As far as I know, this is the only center in the nation that really integrates clinical services and undergraduate and graduate education and research. The Hibble Center is a result of leadership from two pillar organizations, UCCS and Centura Health, recognizing an opportunity and a need in the, for this community and coming together to make something very special happen. Students, teachers, researchers, collaborating with our excellent caregivers at Centura Health is what's going to make this place super special. We have traveled the world, looked at all the wonderful sports medicine facilities, and can say that this is really the only true facility that brings the academics and the clinical piece under one roof. If you look at uh, the two organizations, UCCS and Centura, they've been long-term partners in the community, very committed to the Colorado Springs community, and I, I can't think of a better partnership. We found with Centura Health a shared vision and a commitment to create a sport medicine performance center that integrates undergraduate and graduate education, which is geared towards experiential learning as well as research. I would define sports medicine as a comprehensive care of athletes. The Hibble Center has everything you could ever want as far as an athlete or an active person, as far as equipment, personnel from athletic training staff to performance coaches to physicians, state-of-the-art radiology, MRI, ultrasound, real-time x-ray, um, everything you could want in a, in a one-stop sports medicine center. We understand movement, we understand biomechanics, and so when we're training our athletes, we know how to train them the right way. When you're sprinting, you're not just running down the track. We know your knee angle, your hip angle, how much force production you need. And so there's a lot of value in that for making sure what we're doing in sports performance training actually transfers to what you're doing in your sport. With the collaboration between UCCS and Centura, we have the opportunity to help be on the leading edge of new and improved medical procedures and treatments. I'm excited about the entire building, whether it's education, rehabilitation, whether it's actually dedication to increased performance, this building really has it all. When you look at our facilities, we've really designed the facility so you can do just about anything you'd want to do. For someone like me who studies altitude physiology, we've got altitude chambers, environmental chambers, we've got exercise labs, we've got biomechanics labs, we have rooms that are set up to do you know, sophisticated biochemical work. Everything is under one roof. 
We have 14 instructional spaces in this building. We only have five typical classrooms. So the rest of them are actually instructional laboratories, which combine experiential education and then the traditional didactic education. You know, when you look at this project, I have to think of the vision of Vencat Ready and Centura Health for what they are doing to truly have an impact on sports performance, education, and medicine within the Pikes Peak region, the state, and the nation. Picking the right college is key. And with one-on-one -on -one attention and hands-on experience, UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. The majestic mountain lion. The perfect combination of size and deadly agility. This big cat is capable of speeds of 40 to 50 miles per hour, when properly motivated. UCCS, find your inner mountain lion. UCCS gives me the freedom I need with flexible courses and an inspiring campus. UCCS fuels success. Apply today at uccs.edu. I always dreamed of being an engineer. It encompassed everything that excited me when I was younger. And my first job in the military was an aviation mechanic, which kind of led me to come here to UCCS. UCCS fits a niche that none of the others do. It's the, that first generation kid that wants to go to college. And if we're able to successfully help that kid through college, they can become an incredibly productive member of the community. And odds are, if they become a college graduate, their children and their grandchildren are gonna become a college graduate. It's gonna seem hard, it's gonna seem impossible, but it's not. I mean, I picked a pretty hard degree and I'm almost done. And I've been a single parent the entire time. 70% of our students work and go to school. First of all, I would love to see them supported, but they're also entering the workforce with that work ethic in their mind. That means they are gonna hit the ground running and make a difference for the organizations they work for. I've had some pretty hard financial crisis during my time in school. Um, adulting is hard, for sure. <laughs> but I'm not sure I would have been as successful during this time without that aid as I have been because after my first year, it's, it's been there, it's helped me, and I've continued to work harder because of it, because I don't wanna let these people down. You know, they're investing in me and my future, and, and I want them to be proud of what they put their time and money into. When you provide a scholarship to a student, that scholarship helps that students get through school, graduate, and enter our community as an employer, as a leader, so really, at the end of the day, our community benefits when our students are supported with scholarships. I can't tell you how many managers I've talked to who say, I'm always worried about where my next employee is going to come from, or where my next professional is going to come from. And isn't it terrific that we have so many well-qualified and well-trained students coming out of UCCS who can fill my employment needs? That's a big economic driver for Colorado Springs and the Pikes Peak region. 
A gift to UCCS is an investment in the students. It's an investment in their success because that is what UCCS cares about. They care about whether or not these students graduate and go out into the world and be successful. When you make an investment in the next generation of professionals, you're really making an investment in our community. I always dreamed of being an engineer, and now that I'm so close to graduation, I've got an internship, I feel like I'm well on my way to accomplishing that dream. Welcome back inside the Gallagher Event Center. Halftime, just under two minutes to go. 37-24, MSU Denver with the lead. And Jake, long periods of no scoring for the Mountain Lions, I think, was ultimately the storyline. Right, and we talked about it. I mean, there's been turnovers for both sides. Really, the biggest difference is that MSU is taking those giveaways that they're getting and translating it into points on the other side of the floor. Mount Lions are doing the same things defensively that are good. They're getting those turnovers, but they're not translating it on the other side. And that's kind of where that deficit began to grow on them in the second quarter. Mount Lions, as a team, shot just seven of 31. They were one of seven from the three-point arc, and that was a very early three-pointer from Hanneborg as she leads the team with nine. On the other end, for the Roadrunners, their leading scorer doing exactly that. Yeah, when we talked about she averages just over 17 points a game. She's already got 18 in the first 20 minutes of this one. And for UCCS, on the defensive end, they've been trying to put that full court pressure on MSU Denver, which has been good for them and kind of created a little bit of that, that turnover pressure that they got on the Roadrunners. But the sacrifice that they gave up was that they were losing people once they had to transfer to that set defense. And a lot of times it ended up being para, and you cannot lose her. An interesting stat, UCCS, they have 11 offensive rebounds. 11 offensive rebounds. Now, some of those they had two or three or four on one All possession, you know, but but they when they get those boards, they need to finish. This would be a completely different ball game. Exactly, and exactly to your point, you said that there was there was two or three times where I mean there was once where it was five rebounds for the Mountain Lions on the same trip down the court, 
and it took them all five times to finally get it to sink through the basket, and, and that's just not going to get you across the finish line. All right, let's see what the Mount Lions cooked up in the locker room at halftime as it's the same five starters here in the second half for both teams. First possession is a turnover by UCCS. The Mount Lions are moving really well in terms of ball movement east to west. The only problem is once they try to turn it north-south, that's when they start to get those turnovers. Arguably the easy shot of the night there for Para swirled all the way around and out on the first offensive possession for MSU Denver here in half number two. Your UCCS, the, the unmissable player. Because we're going to get an offensive foul here, it looks like. That's going to be a call there down low on Hannah Borg. UCCS may want to challenge whether that MSU Denver player was in the arc. It doesn't look like they're going to. That was a really late charge call. I feel like Gracie had already left the floor before the Roadrunner got in front of her, but what are you going to do? Quick ball movement. Bonds has a three-pointer. Missed it. Got her own rebound, though. Quickly to Espinosa, who kicks it back out to restart the offense. And again, the Mountain Lions in transition trying to put pressure on and lose a road runner in the defensive set and a wide open look for Bonds from the corner. Three on the shot clock, Bonds, spin move. Good job by Latapia to come over and help. When you get a good stop like that, especially with the block, you have to translate it to points on the other side and use that momentum to get your offense going. See if the mountain lines can translate. Anna Borg, who had seven in the first quarter, was quiet in the second. Still leads the team with nine points and six rebounds. She's got it at the top. Gets it to White, free throw line extended. Robinson cutting into the lane, no good. Long rebound though, right to Nillis, who puts up a quick shot as the shot clock expires, but misses. Yeah, the initial shot didn't hit the rim, so Nillis kinda had to rush her put back shot a little bit, and she was just a little bit too strong. Roadrunner's able to grab the rebound. Ara into the lane, and she's now at 20. Anna Borg thought about it, takes it in, scoop, no good. Mountain Lions again, scoreless for over three minutes as Espinosa drops in two more. Robinson. Oh, got around two Roadrunners. Cannot finish. Again, and a wide open look as Robinson got around both defenders on the outside, and it takes a second chance opportunity to finally get some points on the board. Gracie Hanneborg drops it in, ending a nearly four minute scoreless drought. She's the first mount line in double figures with 11. And the Roadrunners, a little sloppy there as that pass goes straight out of bounds. Dominguez back in the lineup for UCCS. You see Alexa there, she brings the ball in. Anna Borg turns it over. Gracie comes back down the floor limping a little bit. Hopefully she's doing okay. Good defensive switch there though with Hanneborg and Latapia as Hanneborg a little bit behind the play. Galloway working on Inez, kicks it over to Bonds. Bonds into the lane, just a wild shot, no good. And Hanneborg again with a rebound. Gracie drops it off to Dominguez. Into the corner, Nillis, three ball, good. Now Mount Lions using that mismatch there as Bonds was a little bit late coming back to the play from behind and they found the open Mount line when there's only four road runners there defensively, there's gonna be an open white jersey and they found her with Nillis. Nillis is then called for a foul deep in the backcourt, her second personal. 
That three ball from Sydney was just the second triple of the game for UCCS. Yao back into the lineup for MSU Denver. He has the ball. Top Espinosa now over to Para. Back to Espinosa. Three ball straight away. No good. Rebound, they get it back to Espinosa, who then kind of Euro steps through the lane, but Mason pulls down the rebound finally. Quickly up to Alexa Dominguez, down low to Hannah Borg, into the lane, Mason, there we go. Maybe that'll get her started, her first bucket of the game. Yeah, 0 for 3 until getting that one to fall, and that's just not like her. Like you said, one of the best shooters in the country, shooting over 50%, finally gets one to go in. Para. Hard charge towards the rim. We'll head to the free throw line as the foul goes on Hanneborg. That is her fourth. So Gracie will take another look at it. You see Para hard charging, and you saw Gracie kind of trail in the play a little bit. She is going to have to sit for a while, and that could be hard on the mountain lines as she leads them with 11 points tonight. Well, it's good to see that Parr is okay. She kind of slipped and went hard into that padding area behind the basket. That's why they put the padding back there, but still doesn't feel good when you're running into a hard wall like that. She popped back up and is okay. It's good to see. Riley Ottman checked in for Hannah Borg. Gracie, also a team high seven boards, two assists, and three steals. So that's a lot of <laughs> production be sitting on the bench right now when your team's having a hard time putting the ball in the basket. This is, if you're the Mountain Lions, where you kind of have to tar start taking a little bit more of some chances. You can't let this game get away from you. And when you take those chances, you kind of have to walk that line of taking a little bit of risk, but not something that's going to immediately hurt you to try and get your way back up into this one. Galloway, great feed. Oh, yeah, nice pretty play there from MSU Denver as Giberto finishes it off. Yeah, vintage pick and roll there and the give back right underneath. Beautiful looking passing play and they get the finish. 13 point lead now for MSU. Ottman hands it off to Dominguez. Gets a screen from White. Back over to Riley. Thought about the three but works it down to Mason. Mason double teamed outside to Alexa. Her 16 footer is good. Dominguez last year, that was her bread and butter. She was hitting those all over the place. Has struggled from that range a little bit this year, but it's good to see that first one get going for her, and that's how what leads to more. And we're going to get an offensive foul called on Para. She tried to work her way around Ottman. And on Para, that's her second, and that brings us to the media timeout. Mount Lions have climbed back in a little bit, still down by 11 as you see MSU Denver coach uh, Tanya Javi talking to the official. We'll come back with more third quarter action in just a minute.
So UCCS with an opportunity to get their deficit to single digits which would be the first time that that had happened in a long time. So we'll see if they can take advantage of that offensive foul just before the break on Para, who's only got two, so she's not going anywhere anytime soon. As Nillis gets it over to Latapia, they work it down to Mason. Nice passing here from UCCS. Probably had a few open shots if they wanted it, but they'll add a couple extra passes. Latapia step back, no good. Long rebound to Espinosa. Bound lines don't have to not be afraid to pull the trigger. As you said, there's a couple open looks there with a little bit of separation, and you're not going to get those wide open looks every time down the court. So when you get a couple feet separation, you have to be able to have that confidence to go ahead and pull the trigger. Or even just throw in a ball fake. You exactly. see the defender coming, fake it one way and get her to take that extra step and then set yourself. So there just seems to be a little bit of that lack of extra um, you know, play to, to give themselves that open shot that they were looking for as Metro scored on the other end, so their lead back up to 13. The top of the drive, wow, a lot of contact. It was a shot, but it ended up almost like a pass to Mason White down low. Yeah, Mason White able to finish it, and surprised we didn't get a whistle on that play. The way that they've been calling those drives underneath throughout this game, just a track record so far. We kind of assumed that there would be a whistle on that play, none, and the Mountain Lions able to get the. And there's one down low as White certainly looked like she had her hands in the back of the roadrunner that was Giberto. So just the first, however, on Mason. Three ball from the corner is good. And Para is three of five from beyond the arc. Yeah, an effective ball screen there kind of left her open in the corner. You could see Riley Ottman trying to kind of weave her way around the defender to still get that extra pressure. It's just a moment too late. And, and when you're shooting the way that Para is, that's all you need is that extra moment. White's jumper off the mark. So Mason's still looking for a first basket outside of a couple of foot radius around the rim, but Para, good hands by the freshman Ottman to strip it. It'll stay with MSU Denver, but there's only six left on the shot clock. I'm going to take this moment to kind of shout out Riley Ottman. She's been eating up a lot of minutes, especially as a freshman this season, and she's really shown an ability to kind of make that speedy impact for the Mount Lions, especially on defense, as you saw there. Tough assignment with Para, the way that she's been shooting, but Ottman has the speed to kind of stay up in her face and go with her wherever she goes. Wow. Turn around in the lane. I'm not even sure that Jones was looking at the rim, but she got up to fall. Yeah, just kind of a wing and a prayer there as the shot clock was down below two seconds. High off the glass for Jones, able to get it to fall through. Ottman, long two-pointer. No good. Under a minute to go here in the third quarter, and MSU Denver still holding on to a double-digit lead. Their largest of the lead has been 17. It currently sits at 16. Jones had it stolen there by Nillis as she tried to pass it into the middle of the key. Nation, the drive over to Sydney. She hit one from that corner earlier, but goes into the lane, loses the ball. Riley runs it down in the corner and then throws it away because Sydney wasn't paying attention. Espinosa all the way down for the finish and the foul. Another late whistle from the officials, but Espinosa gets it to fall, and MSU Denver has their largest lead of the game. Kind of unfortunate for Nillis on the other side of the floor. Had a nice drive underneath, kind of lost the ball right at the last moment there. And a, able to go the other way was Espinosa. Another late whistle. We talked about that a little bit in the first half. The three-point play opportunity here for Espinosa at the line. 
And she misses it. Hovass checked in before the free throw for UCCS, replacing Ottman, and now Emily has the ball. She's going to pull up from about 12 feet, and the freshman knocks it down. That's something that the Mountain Lions have really lacked offensively this year. Oh, from midcourt, Espinosa just a little wide right. And that is three quarters completed here in the Galilee Event Center. The UCCS at Mountain Lion women find themselves down 16. We're going to take a break when we come back. The final 10 minutes. Don't go anywhere. Final 10 minutes have started here in the Galilee Event Center. Mountain Lions are going to have to make a massive comeback if they want an opportunity in this one as they start it down by 16. And the Roadrunners, at this point, if they take about 20 seconds off the shot clock every possession, it's going to be enough. <laughs> yeah, and you just have to use your time. That's just the, the right thing to do tactically if you're the Roadrunners. Anytime you have the ball, don't even start your play until there's 15 seconds on the shot clock, and then it's going to be time for the buzzer to sound before you know it. Para, who's got a game-high 24, running the offense. She gets it over to Galloway, who then got around her defender, but she kicked it out for a three ball. No good. It's going to go off of Para and out of bounds. UCCS. And to that point from the other other direction, you see how the Mountain Lions kind of played it. They're already a minute gone in this quarter. You gotta you you gotta know that MSU Denver is gonna be using that clock. So you gotta put that pressure on them to start their play early. Hovas, there we go. Nice little elbow jumper there from her. We saw that at the end of the third quarter too, and I started to say that's that's a part of the offense that the Mountain Lions have really lacked this season is that pull-up jumper from a little bit past kind of that 15-foot range. And Hovas has made several of those in her young career here at UCCS. Somehow the Mountain Lions got away, I think, with the travel. Almost the exact same spot, and Emily's liking that look there. She knocks down the jumper, and MSU Denver is going to call a timeout. The first coach is called timeout of the second half, turns into a full timeout. So we'll take a break. Mount Lions have got it down to 12.
So Emily Hovas has come off the bench and dropped in a couple of shots from the elbow. She's got six points in just six minutes. We'll see if uh, the Mountain Lions maybe can take some of her energy and add it to the other four players on the court as they have a 12-point deficit to overcome in the final eight minutes and eight seconds. And a travel called on Galloway as she was looking for some help. Drug her pivot foot just a little bit. And if you're MSU Denver, this is exactly the wrong thing to be doing. You can't be giving the Mount Lions more trips down the court. They're finally getting baskets to drop in. And Hovess has a hot hand. If I'm UCCS, I would stick with her. And MSU Denver got it out of the hands of Emily and then caused a turnover near midcourt. And Galloway came away with the steal. Again, MSU Denver is just going to use that clock. So for the Mountain Lions defensively, you have to kind of push forward and get that high line defense up, force them to run that play sooner in the shot clock. Wow, long three from Para, no good. Guess when your team's up 12, you can put up a shot like that if you feel like it. That was tipped by Bonds out near midcourt, but the Mountain Lions get it over to Dominguez. To Nation at the elbow, but two Roadrunners converge and force another turnover. UCCS offensively just can't force anything. It was good free throwing there right before free throw. I'm going to try that again. Free flowing right before that timeout was called, and you're finally getting that momentum because they weren't trying to force the shot. Para. Wow, that was kind of a wild shot. Looks like maybe she did take a shot across the arm, but no foul called, so ball goes out of bounds and back to the home team. Uh, the Mountain Lions, the last two possessions, just having a hard time holding on to the ball. And UCCS is going to call a timeout, just a 30-second for the Mountain Lions as they are now scoreless in their last 147, unfortunately unable to take advantage of a more than three-minute scoreless drought by the Roadrunners. Yeah, and just kind of chunky play the last couple minutes on both sides of the court. Heads up coaching there from Lynn Platt on the Mountain Lions bench right before, if, if you waited any longer, that was going to turn into a jump ball. They would have kept it, but then that gives the alternating possession arrow back to MSU Denver if you have that situation again. So good job there, calling the timeout, kind of giving your players on the floor a chance to kind of catch their breath and get their wits about them again and maintain possession. You wonder how much longer Coach Plett's going to keep Gracie Hanneborg and Mason White on the bench. His top two, arguably his top two players, have not played a lot here in the fourth quarter. And actually it looks like at least Mason is currently in the team huddle, so she'll be back out on the court. Hanneborg, however, does not look like she will be out there. She does have four fouls, but, I mean, there's only six and a half minutes to go at this point. He just let her come out and play. Yeah, there's always that argument to be had of, of when do you kind of take the risk of putting him, that player with four fouls back out there, especially when that person has had as much of an impact in the game as Hanneborg has had. Not to speculate, there was that one moment where she got up and was kind of hobbled a little bit. Maybe that's playing into the decision. But if she's feeling good to go, once you get under five minutes for sure, you kind of have to give her that shot to see what happens. But they're starting to get a little bit of momentum with Hovas out there, so maybe they're trying to stick with that hot hand. And the Mountain Lions playing shorthanded to the rest of the season as starting guard Sophia Bela is out with a broken hand, broken finger rather. She broke it last Tuesday. That three ball from Hovas is off the mark. And the long rebound by the Roadrunners. And they'll slow it down. So they'll take another 10 to 15 seconds off of the game clock. 
Take no good. Mason, another rebound. She's got nine. Up to four minutes scoreless now for MSU Denver. UCCS has got to take advantage of this stretch. And there is Hannah Borg actually back out on the floor. Looking down low to Mason. They get it to her. White, however, is instantly double teamed. I mean, that's been a part of the mountain line offense all year, and teams are starting to read it really well. And a full court coast-to-coast -coast layup for Galloway. Yeah, and once you start to kind of run your offense through a single player like the Mountain Lions have with White, sooner or later teams are going to take notice, and you start to see that here with MSU and Mason White. Nation had it poked away. It rolls out of bounds. It'll stay here. White looks, a, or excuse me, Nation looked a little upset. I think she was wanting a foul called there. Doesn't get it. Hovas. Yeah, she likes that spot. That's three in a row she's hit from that elbow. Yeah, just a little bit from behind where that free throw line would extend to. And wherever it's hitting from, you got to find that spot and take the shot. And she's been doing that. Hovas has tied her career high. That's eight points for her. Again, she did not play a lot in the first half of the season, has gotten significantly more minutes here in the second half of the year, and she's taken advantage. Nice shot there from Bonds as it rolls over the rim. Hovas, no good, a little wild, and it goes. Well, the initial call was that it went out of bounds on the Mount Lions, but then the other official comes in and changes that call, so it'll stay with UCCS. The Tapia, nice inbounds to Hannah Borg, and she gets fouled from behind by Para. She'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, three now for Para. She'll, I, I, there's only four and a half minutes left, so not too careful, but a little bit careful as she's a big part of the scoring effort here for MSU Denver. But when you're kind of swatting away from behind the shooter like that, they're going to blow the whistle every time, and Hanneborg heads to the line. Gracie knocks down the first one. Second one also good. So Hanneborg up to 13 points, still leads the Mountain Lions. It's full court press usually creates turnovers for the Mountain Lions. At least it has the last handful of weeks today. Just, just not there for them. Travel called on Para. They say that she took a little bit of a hop, skip, and a jump <laughs> before setting her feet. Yeah. Seemed like, again, kind of a late whistle, though, because she was planted looking for somebody else, and then they made the call. So When she kind of questioned the, the whistle there, and I think that was the complaint that she had, is if you think that I hopped, then that's fine to blow the whistle, but why the hesitation? Latapia, great take amongst the traffic and lays it up and in. 10 points, the closest the Mountain Lions have been in a long time. Loose ball. And we're going to get a timeout called by MSU Denver. And now you see the MSU Denver coach talking to the same official about that last play. And then Para trying to get a re-explanation as well. And it's going to be a 30-second for Metro. Let's take a look inside the Mountain Lion Huddle, who, again, just down 10. Uh, I mean, it feels like they've been out of the game for a while, but only down 10, three and a half minutes to go. There are plenty of possessions left if they can do what they need to do. Yeah, and the way that this game has been going, it just doesn't feel like they should be in this situation at all. I mean, if you look at the number side of it as well, MSU Denver has been shooting 49% from the field. Mount Lions just 32%. Granted, UCCS not the best shooting team in general. I mean, season long, they've only been shooting 39% from the field overall. 
but there was a point here that they were down to 26% just inside of this game, and even for them, that's 10% below where they usually are. They were starting to get in their own head, and and really, I, I credit this, this run back from Hovas. She's the one that really kind of reignited the offensive effort, and the Mountain Lions, if they continue, can get right back into this game. And there we go off the inbounds. Nillis, great job of reading that pass and coming up with the steal. Quickly gets it up to Emily. Over in the corner, take, no good, rebound to the Roadrunners. And then a foul on Hovas. UCCS was strong on the rebound on the other side of the floor. Need to be there on this side of the floor as well with 321 to play. Galloway the crossover on Emily. They're gonna get a foul called on Nillis. The third team foul for UCCS. So reset a little bit of the shot clock and the Roadrunners will be able to take some more precious seconds. Kick into the corner, Bonds. Oh, long rebound by the Roadrunners. Good job by MSU Denver there. Killed a ton of clock and then came away with an offensive board. Yeah, kind of a wild shot there from Bonds. Ton of spin on that ball, but able to get the long rebound. And another offensive rebound, and Bonds just throws it back out towards midcourt. And you could see it, Para there literally hands it off over to Galloway and says, hold it. Wait for the Mount Lions to come to you and use as much clock as you can as they try and kill off the rest of this game. Bonds is going to have to put up another late shot. Nope, kicks it out to Para, who's three ball, no good. White comes down with it. Now Mason has 10 rebounds. Good heads up play there by White, too, understanding that she picked up the dribble there as she was kind of fumbling for that ball. Would have been a turnover. Down low to Mason. There we go with the finish at the rim. And the lead is just eight as the Mount Lions call a quick timeout. Actually, that timeout I think might have come from MSU Denver so they could potentially get the ball out near midcourt. But, I mean, eight points, man. Like, there's two minutes left. If UCCS, they played some pretty good defense the last handful of possessions. MSU Denver again scoreless for nearly three minutes. That's their second extended scoreless run in this quarter. Yeah, and the difference this time around is UCCS is taking advantage of that stress, of that stretch I should say, as they've scored six points, 6-0 six run for UCCS during that scoreless drought for MSU Denver. They will still be down under the basket on the far side, so Keep the pressure up and, and stay in the face. And Hovas, the Mountain Lions have gotten to the fouling portion of this game, I think, as they're going to try and put the Roadrunners on the line and see if they can squeeze out a few more possessions. Full court press. Robinson got her hand on it but couldn't control it as it goes out of bounds. Well, on the way that the Mountain Lions have been playing up front in the front court, this game, they have been putting the pressure on and getting opportunities for turnovers, so this is a good chance to do that. And once they start to break, as you see there, that's when you foul. You try and get the steal first. If they start to slip away, then you foul. So that's four now on the mountain lines. One more, and the runners will go to the charity stripe. Resetting the shot clock, it was at the wrong number. Oh, wow, quickly into the front court. Good job by the Roadrunners to come up with an easy two points. Gilberto pushes the lead back out to 10. Quickly down low to Mason, back out to Hovas. Three ball, short. 
And now the Roadrunners literally doing that, just running up the court. And a foul there by Nillis in front of the MSU Denver bench. And Galloway will go to the free throw line. Take a look there at Para, who has a quiet second half, but at 18 in the first half and really hasn't needed a whole lot here in the final 20. No, I mean, 24 points. She was sitting at 18 at halftime. We talked about averaging just over 17. Just kind of gave that breakout performance that needed to push this game out of that what we thought was reach now starting to get reeled in a little bit. I think it's just going to be a little bit too, a little too little too late for UCCS. Galloway hits both free throws. Barris lost the ball and MSU Denver comes away with another turnover. Para killed a few more seconds as we have 64 of them left in the contest. And Para will have an opportunity to add to her game high. She does. So she hits both of them. For UCCS in the final minute of this game, you kind of have to keep that pressure up. Try and keep the tempo up because you've got a big night tomorrow night. Number nine team in Division II coming to town with the ore diggers of Colorado School of Mines coming down from Golden. Very tough matchup. Obviously, this was kind of a tough one for UCCS getting the ball rolling, keeping that momentum throughout the game. But now that you're starting to get those possessions strung together here late in the game, you have to start to kind of keep that momentum up to translate it into tomorrow's game where you're going to have quite the task here in Gallagher. Para hits a free throw as she came away with a steal. Galloway is on the bench for MSU. She played 37 minutes. And Para knocks down the second. And she's going to play 38 of the 40 minutes in this game, it looks like. And another loose ball. Hovas was able to hold on to it. Jump ball called. Para and Bonds take a seat. Para's night comes to an end. She has 28 points as she gets a big hug from her coach. And Mason White will head to the free throw line. She'll have a chance now at her own double-double. If she can knock down both of these free throws, she currently sits at eight points and 10 boards. Knocks down the second. Good steal there by Ferris. Read that one perfectly. Quickly gets it up to Hovas, who can't finish with the left. But a rebound by Ferris. Her finish not good either. White comes down with another rebound. Tries to scoop it up and in, and Mason will head back to the free throw line. Again, Mountain Lion's good on the offensive blast, but the same thing that we talked about earlier in the game. Just can't get those second point opportunities to fall in. And Mason White on the third opportunity is fouled and will go to the line. The chance again at the double-double. Mountain Lions with 17 offensive rebounds in this game. But you're right, a lot of them have been like that, where they've gotten the one, missed it, gotten the second one, and haven't been able to convert. So that stat may be a little misleading, because otherwise that's very good to see. And there it is, a small consolation for the RMAC Offensive Player of the Week, Mason White, has her double-double. This is going to be it, as the Roadrunners are just going to run out the time. But there was some positives to take away from UCCS in that game, as you said. The, the offensive rebound is something to really key on. 
They've always been a good rebounding team, has UCCS, but it, the story really is that the struggles they've had up on offense, they need to get those points to fall because in the RMAC, teams are going to score points. You have to be able to keep pace. So the loss drops UCCS to 5-11 and 11 on the year, 4-6 and six in RMAC play. And they will be back at it again, as Jake already mentioned, taking on the number nine team in the country in the Colorado School of Mines. That game will be at 5 o'clock. As for this evening, don't go too far. These same two schools, just the men's program, will tip it off in about 20 minutes as the Mountain Lions will look to earn the school-wide split. Don't go too far. We'll be back with more UCCS basketball in about 20 minutes. 